Good afternoon, and I think, yes, we are live. Hi, and welcome to my daily chat. Uh, this is episode number 578. These numbers get longer and longer. Um, and the topic today is part five in a series I didn't plan on starting called Wrapping Up This Year. And this is part five. The topic is What Have You Received? And I'll jump, jump to that as soon as I introduce myself and tell you what I'm about, and then we'll get up to speed. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, strong successful, and high-achieving women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And basically every day for well over a year, I've done these every day. Um, but for over two years now, I've done these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And I didn't plan on doing it, but five days ago, I started a series of talks about wrapping up the year. So this is part five, which is about what did you receive? Yesterday was part four, which is what have you been, what did you give? Part three was, I'm gonna look back at part one, was what are you releasing? Part two is what are you grateful for? Part three was what did you allow or accomplish? I got them all five, okay. <laughs> so welcome to my chat. Thanks for being with me. Um, you can interact if you want, if you're watching this. And by the way, this is Facebook Live first. It goes onto YouTube later on. So if you're watching it on YouTube, it's already done. It was on Facebook Live first on my personal page. I'll give you the links and everything about that at the back end. So what did you receive this year? And I'm going to put this into more than one spot because it's one of these things where what are the gifts you received? It's also the one about what are the curses you received? And I don't mean that literally. I mean the energetics of negative stuff that you may have put up with, received, allowed, let in, that sort of thing because I had a few of those myself. <laughs> so I'm not the only one I know. So let's break this down a bit because this is part of what, I would what I'm talking about is wrapping up, completing the year because today is December 31st. This is New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, by the way. Um, and so I wanted to do something that would be a way of bookending the year. So we're wrapping up 2018 and hi, Jennifer, thanks for the love. Um, sharing about some things that you can maybe change and rewire because it, just to say, well, what do you receive this year? is like, so what? But if you receive things you didn't want, how can you do that less next year or erase completely? And if you got to receive things you did want, how can you do more of that next year? See, this is a proactive or interactive or a advisory talk, all the above. And so I wanted to give you some thoughts, some inspiration, some suggestions, and maybe some, what's the word looking for? Um, Happy New Year to you too. Um, Moving forward, book in, book ending is freeing energy. Yes, Mary, exactly. Thank you for that phrasing. I like that. Hi, Rebecca. Wow, I see all these people here. It's nice to have you in my broadcast. Um, yes, book ending in a way is freeing energy. This is completion of 2018. And if you haven't done this, I recommend doing it. I actually did some today. I did some on Christmas. No, on Friday, I did some as well. Basically, it's writing all the things that I have been willing to release from this year, which is Tuesdays? Mon that was, no, yes. It was five talks ago. Basically, I wrote down things that I was releasing, beliefs, judgments, stuff like that. I crumpled them up and then burned them in the fireplace. I did that earlier today, and I feel a lot freer from doing it. So if you want to free up some energy, I definitely recommend looking at things that didn't work for you this past year. Maybe things you have been running as beliefs, false programming in your head, that you can put it on paper saying, I release my belief that I'm whatever that is, and write, that, write all those out on a piece of paper, crumple them up. Don't, don't, don't fold them up, but crumple them up because they burn easier. Take them to a fireplace somewhere safe. And if you want to bless them, give thanks, make a little prayer, burn them and release them, that frees up the energy as well. So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bonus that wasn't part of this talk officially. But I, that's what I was doing earlier today as I also did on Friday. So it feels good to do that. So if you've got anything that you're feeling that's blocking you or running um, in the tapes in your head, definitely recommend doing that one. I thought I suggested that one my on, top, on part one, but if I didn't, consider this a PS for part one which is about what you released. So back to receiving. Again, <clears throat> again, there's the thing about receiving is that we don't always have control of what it is. Now, if you're somebody looking at relationships, and I'm going to put this piece out there one way for a moment. If you're a woman watching this, and it seems like most of the people watching this are women at the moment, I would speak to this first of all is that, ladies, your power is in your ability to receive. And let me be clear, you have the ability to qualify that. So you're not blindly going, give me everything and I'll take it all on. Because some women do that, not recommended. 
But the truth is the feminine in women, particularly, it's also men, but the feminine in women is a receptive energy. In fact, that's really where the spiritual principle resides in the feminine. Yes, I just outed men on this one. <laughs> so the masculine energy is more giving, pushing, directing. If you, in sexual energy, usually men are giving to women in terms of their, their um, penetrating, that's the word. And this is, uh, that's from David Ada's work. He talks about the energy of masculine energy penetrates the feminine energy. Now, that's physical and also energetic. But I wanted to give you that thought for a moment and be that blunt because I want to make sure that you ladies understand, the ladies watching in particular, that your power is in the ability to receive more than you know you can with the caveat that you choose. Because again, some women, I know quite a few of them in fact, who have received things they didn't want from relationships that are abusive to um, being fired from jobs they didn't deserve being fired from to losing out on advantage in life because they didn't know how to receive in a higher level. So the thing about this is, and I wanna make sure you get this point, ladies especially, receiving is not a blind, no choice experience. You're welcome, Susan. And I see you in broadcast. Hi, happy New Year to you too. Receiving is actually a tunable skill. Yes, receiving is a skill. Because what happens in a way is that, I'm just seeing an analogy dropping into my awareness, is if you know, um, there's, an, oh, there's an analogy, okay, great. If you know what, if, you know, if you've ever used polarized sunglasses or polarized windows, you may be aware of the fact that polarization puts light into a certain uh, direction. Yes, receiving at a higher level. Yes, Mary, I'm breaking that down for you. So here, 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 we, here goes, I'm giving you an analogy. So polarized sunglasses, yes, what's that got to do with this, you're wondering? Let me explain. When you use polarized sunglasses, what they do is they limit how much light comes through, not just like dark glasses, but they actually limit the, the angles. Let me say it this way. Light comes at you from all sorts of different angles and directions of stuff. Polarization is putting it into one plane. So when you look at, when you're using polarized sunglasses and you look at, um, like a, sun, a swimming pool, suddenly the reflection on the surface doesn't hit you. You don't see it. You get to see it into the water. That's the power of polarization. Now, receiving is a similar skill. You can refine what you're open to because a lot of it, what it's tied to, and I was talking about this earlier when I was burning stuff up, is the beliefs you run. You receive at a higher level, to answer your question, Mary, by getting clear about your beliefs. Because if you believe that you don't deserve the best, you receive less than that. If you believe you deserve only the best, you'll tend towards that direction. And it takes more than just that saying it, but, but in terms of your belief system, wherever it's running, and most of it's subconscious, which is a piece I'll talk about in a moment, defines what you receive and how you get things coming in, how you get what you want into your life. And here's the thing, this is one of the painful lessons. If you look back at your life, say this last year, and you see things you didn't like showing up in your life, and this is gonna sound painful to ask this question, but I'm gonna invite you to reflect on maybe how that might've showed up. And particularly in the area of relationships, because this is my speciality, if you're in a relationship with a man, ladies, and this, this works for, women, for the other way around too, but ladies, if you're in a relationship with a man who doesn't respect you, is it possible that you carry some sort of belief inside, maybe even not conscious or subconscious, that you don't respect yourself? This is the thing about, about receiving we're generally gonna be mirroring inside versus outside. So if your internal belief structure is set up a certain way, you'll generally be reflected in the way you experience life on the outside. Now, this is one of those challenging things for a lot of people to go, no, 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 I'm, I'm responsible for this. This is the thing. I didn't plan to go this way, but we're gonna go here first. I'll come back to the other side, I hope. We'll see where this goes. But this is the thing. Your, the way that one of my teachers put it is your outer experience is a reflection of inner reality. Meaning that what you experience out in the world is a mirror of what you've been running inside as a tape or a programming or belief structure. So if your relationships aren't what you want, then I suggest from what this teaching is based upon, and this is the deep work, so I'm not just giving you saying, oh, it's no problem, it's easy. This is the work I do with my clients, is recognizing that if you are running, sorry, if you have an experience of relationships out in the world that are abandoning or neglecting or abusing or addictive or whatever those are, it ties to some sort of belief inside that's encouraging that. This is what I mean about like polarized sunglasses. Polarization lets light in at a certain frequency or a certain way. If you look at um, prisms, not prisons, prisms, light prisms. When you shine light through them, it goes into a broad spectrum. But the thing is, if you use filters, 
you only see different colors of light. The same thing is true for your belief structures because you run beliefs that are in a certain frequency, like a certain color of light, that's what you're going to see in the world. Now part of it, <laughs> yeah, here we go, part of it is going to be what it is that you're seeing is based on what you believe. So even though other things might show up, you don't actually see them as so to speak because they're not fitting into your, your actual laser focus. Let me throw it this way at you. A long time ago, I learned this, learned this as well. There's a part of the brain in the lower lizard part of the brain called the reticulate, reticular activating system. R-A-T for short, RAT. <laughs> Sorry, R-A-S, excuse me, RAS. So reticular, reticular activating system. It's a subconscious um, de harmonic detection. And it's useful because it runs automatically. Meaning that, for example, if you're a mother with a child, when the baby was born, you probably had an acute sensitivity to when they cried, even though they might be in two rooms down the hall. But you didn't even know her fire engine go by sometimes because that's the reticular, reticular, such a hard thing to say, reticular activating systems frequency was set to baby is the most, prior, most important priority. So if you're a mother, this, this will hopefully make sense to you. Now, what's it going to do with attracting? So if, for example, you were saying, okay, I want to, I'm looking at new cars and you were thinking to yourself, I like the idea of a nice Mercedes, for example. Have you noticed that when you're out in the world driving around, you'll see more and more, more Mercedes than you've ever seen before? They just seem to show up everywhere. Now, they were there before, but you weren't focused on them. But by putting your awareness into what you're focusing on, you see them in the world. This is how receiving at a high level works, is that you have to put in the focus to get out the result. So receiving is a skill set. You know, um, I have a, my signature program called Attract the Man You Want. Sounds simplistic, attract the man you want. Well, it's not quite that simple. It's an eight module program, in fact. But in it are key pieces that set up a frequency of harmonics that when you are clear on what you're attracting, you tend to draw that in more than anything else. Now, that man might have been out there all the time, but you weren't aligned to the energy to be able to draw him in. And it's not a seduction piece, by the way. I'm not going to get into that journey. <laughs> but the recognition is that the Attract the Man You Want program, <clears throat> as an example, builds the inner harmonic frequencies, the inner um, focus, so what's out there becomes lined up. So Mary, so put in the focus to get out what you want. Basically, yes, in a way. Now, here's the thing. It's not a, a guarantee that every time you do it, the results will happen immediately. Partly because this is what we're talking about on a conscious mind. What we're talking about right now, which you're reading and you're responding to, is up here, metaphorically speaking. Subconscious is lower than that. And a subconscious mind runs automatic pilot since we were children. And so as an adult, you may be saying, well, what I want to attract is this, this, and this. But your subconscious mind is going, yeah, but I'm attracting this, this, and this. Because that's the, that's the disc, di uh, not discord, but it's the difference between the two. So you might be saying in a conscious mind, I want to attract the very best in relationship. I want the real, the right person, everything showing up. But the reality shows up doesn't match that. It's because your subconscious mind is actually running stronger magnetism to pull in what you're looking for, what you're not looking for, but what it needs to find. I hope they're making, making some sense. This is a nuanced piece, and I didn't plan on getting here, but that's where I'm going with it. Um, I will put a link in the comments, by the way, for the Attract the Man You Want program, so you check it out, because tonight is the last day of the holiday specials, because it is the end of the year. Um, I've got, it's a massive discount, by the way, um, and I hate doing that, because you know, I don't want to do it the next year, because the discount in my work is feels cheap, <laughs> but it's a good offer. So I'll put the, the, the links afterwards so you can check it out for yourself. But the thing about this piece, I want to talk about it more. So what was that Mary saying? So you have to be on a similar frequency. You need to be on a certain level to get a man who will match your frequency, not higher. That's the thing is it is it and it's it is that's the simplistic way of saying it. But it's not just okay, I'll just tune in the right frequency, you'll get, get the sort of person you want to be with. It is more than that. As I mentioned, the subconscious in my coaching work with my clients, the biggest piece I work on is what is it? That, what are the tapes that you're running automatically? You're not even aware of. So the first thing is bringing awareness to what's not conscious initially, and then start changing it. So that's the frequency shifting that goes on. But when you're getting clear about what you want to attract and bringing in, and you're bring and you're receiving this year, you have an ex you have a perfect documentation of what's working, what's not working, this past year. As you look back this past year, if things showed up that you wanted and it was great, you're in alignment. If you, things showed up this year that weren't in alignment with what you wanted 
or things that showed up that you didn't want and they were like, no, I don't want that, then you're not in alignment. So basically 2018 can be a scorecard in a way. It can be a framework you can go back and go, ooh, that wasn't what I wanted. Or you can go, yes, it was, that was great. Either way, it's a tracking mechanism to see how things are because when you look back at the past year, you'll know what's running in your subconscious. Relationships, as I said many times before, are 90% run by your subconscious mind. That sounds scary, I know, but that's the way the attraction works. So Mary, sorry, see what, see what you're saying again. So you've done a lot, great deal of work on yourself, wonderful. You don't want to wait forever to reach out for a relationship. Well, this is the thing about this, isn't it, Mary. Um, I do recommend my Attract the Man You Want program. It'll certainly put in the right direction. But the thing is, it's not a, it's, um, it's that reach out piece that was triggering, that was triggering for a second. So I've said this before, but I'll say it again in this context. When it comes to relationships, ladies, your first step is not to go chasing the men. No. So reaching out for a relationship, let's play with that a little bit. I would say if you want to change it, so you don't want to wait forever for the man to show up, and that I would agree with. That's definitely true. And we can do things in the way you attract what you want to resonate to bring in what you really want. But the thing is that chasing the men, ladies, do not do that, please. It's not alignment to your feminine. The feminist power, and it is a power, is to bring in what you want with great um, magnetic pull and intentional focus. So it's those two pieces together that give you what you want. It's clarity of what you're looking for, and then the agenda. There's a lot more to this than that. Um, but I want to give you the, this, this is the cliff notes in a way, give me the sense of what it's about. And so my question to you is, looking back at this past year, what did you get? What did you receive? What did you allow in? What, what is it you got that you really wanted? And what was it you got you had no idea it was coming? I had some amazing surprises this year that were really good, which is kind of like scored, I guess I'm in the right place. There was pleasant surprises. I also had things that didn't show up the way I wanted. And not so much they didn't, sh they, didn't they, they showed up the wrong way, they didn't show up. So I know that in parts of me I'm still working on, I'm changing some my own internal wiring so that, that next year things will show up the way I want them to. It's a choice, we all have that. And bottom line, just so you know, I'm not perfect to this. One, because I'm in the masculine, not in the feminine, which is harder for me to do the attraction work. But secondly, I'm also, I'm, ba I'm dancing on both sides. And again, as I said at the beginning, both men and women carry both masculine and feminine. It's not one or the other. But women are generally more, um, what's the word? Facil? That's, that's kind of a word, I facilitate. Women are more aligned to their feminine naturally. Men are more aligned to their masculine naturally. Don't always live there, but that's kind of the benefit. So for us as men to actually go out and to pursue, you know, oh, you got some surprising attention, short-lived, decided about the possibility. Great, Mary. That sounds, um, that sounds, as long as the attention you want that was surprising, was pleasantly surprising, not, not, um, um, <laughs> upsettingly surprising. So as long as it was good, then then that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. So thank you, Mary, for sharing that. Um, anybody else looking for, for love in all the wrong places? I do have ways of helping you with that, by the way. Um, so receiving is a feminine skill, draws things in. If you're getting what you want, awesome. If you're not getting what you don't want, happy, good, Mary. I'm glad to hear that. If you're getting what you, if you're getting things that you don't want, then you want to look at your reflection again. Look at 2018 as a um, scorecard. How did life show up for you? In relationship, in business, in money, in health, in um, spirituality, in social life, all these different areas of your life. Can you look back at your life and see, yes, things worked out? Great, do more of that. If it didn't work out, don't do that anymore. It's kind of like the, the um, I'm trying to remember the quote comes from. It's like, do more of what works and do less of what doesn't simple as that. I recommend what I recommend in my programs because they'll help you get on track more easily. And again, I'll put the links in the comments so you know what those are, because this, this is the last day of my offers. And um, I think that really is it. I mean, you've got my you've got my point, I think. I made the point clearly. Again, this is part five, wasn't planned, on a five-part series called Wrapping Up the Year. I'll put the links to part one through four in the comments below, um, which will give you some review to look at as well. I'll also put the links in the comments for my Attract the Man You Want program and my coaching offer so you can reach out to me for support. And since receiving is a good skill to have, I recommend the self-love practice as well because right now you can practice more self-love easily, effortlessly, even if you're not in a relationship. So I'll put that in the comments as well. Um, tomorrow is January 1st, 2019. So Happy New Year, by the way. And I will be doing a Facebook Live as usual, 5 p.m. Pacific time. 
that's going to be about what you want to set up for the new year. So join me tomorrow for that, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'm going to start planting some seeds that will grow into mighty oaks in 2019. And I invite you to join me for that. Um, replays. This is my Facebook Live on my personal page first. And thank you for the interaction. I appreciate that, Mary, and all the other people who joined in. This will be on my business page um, afterwards for, for archive, which is barryselby.author, facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. You can find them there. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, congratulations, you found me on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby, and my playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine, where these all live, and that's all of them together. So you can search through those, find the ones that match, resonate for you, the titles that trigger you, or inspire you, or some other way, and you want to look at those. Um, and after that, I'm building out my podcast, which is also called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You're welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And and take advantage of my offers. They last till tonight, then they're done. Um, yeah, sorry. Podcast is Messages of the Masculine. You can subscribe to that if you wish to as well. And download the audios and listen to them when you're traveling or doing other things. Any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off, um, either on Facebook or on YouTube. And I'll be back in tomorrow on New Year's Day to do a little chat about how you want to set up 2019. I appreciate you being with me and thanks for the interaction. And I wish you a beautiful, pleasant evening. Whatever you're doing to celebrate or to be quiet or to hang out with friends or just to watch movies, whatever you do, enjoy your New Year's Eve and I'll see you in the new year tomorrow. Take care. Bye. You look for my offers. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mary. I'll put them in the comments below this. You'll see them in about within half an hour. All right. Thank you for being with me. And again, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.